Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for clicking on the video as always. I know I haven't really been putting many videos out at all. I think you're just gonna have to get used to the fact that I'm a very sporadic uh, YouTuber. I'm going for a camp tonight, but it's only my third camp of the year. I just, I just haven't had the mental energy for some reason to to get out and do these things. You know, never mind actually make a full video. I'm getting pretty stir crazy, and I just got to the point where I just needed to get out. You know, just have a have a night out, and it's actually the summer solstice weekend. Uh, so it's June. What is it? June twenty second. It's very warm and humid. It's cloudy at the moment, but it's supposed to be quite a nice evening, but quite windy, but that should be good for the keeping the midge off. I'm not gonna camp in the forest at this time of year. It's just, it's just miserable. So I found a, a relatively small hill. It's only 600 meters and uh, it's not far from the car park either. It's maybe three kilometer walk in, you know, just something relatively easy just to get out and enjoy, enjoy a night out. I'm just making my way up this old stalker's path. It's a decent path to be honest, but it's uh, getting a little bit overgrown, so I don't think it's well used. The nice thing is you can you can see all the pine and birch regen starting to creep back up the hill to where it should be. This is the hill that I'm uh, planning to camp on top of, just behind me here. Like I say, it's not particularly high. I think the summit point is uh, 602 meters, I think. But you probably see quite an obvious band of trees. So there's some uh, you know, ancient Caledonian pines in there. Uh, some birch left as well, which is nice. And I think I can even see a big rowan. But you'll see this in a lot of places in Scotland where the terrain is very steep and these trees have basically survived because they're inaccessible to you know grazing animals or it was it was an area that never got uh, burned or you know there was no interest in it because it was just too rocky and steep for for anything or anyone to do anything with it so uh it, it's still here you know It's great to see um, some of the stuff up here. I mean, we're probably about 550 meters now and a uh, nice big or big patch here of uh, eared willow, Salix arita. And I can see pine, rowan, birch all over the place and way up to the top of this hill as well, which is, which is really positive. This is at the, at the top. I've just come down, uh, I don't know, maybe five meters behind this rock and it's much more sheltered. I was prepared to camp right on the top uh, with a view, but yeah, the way the, the way the hill is, the wind's coming from the southwest uh, tonight and it said it could get up to sort of 30, 35 miles an hour. So if we're just gonna be you know, smashed by the wind all night. It's not really that enjoyable. So I think I'll just come down just a little bit. There's a flat spot just in front of me that looks looks pretty good. So I've got another new tent and I know what you're thinking, another one. How many tents do you need? But it's actually, it's a new old one. It's one of the planes and gliders again going past. Pretty much at the same same height now. So yeah, I went ahead and bought another cloud up too. Now, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I had one before. It was like a pale grey, kind of looked like a cheap, uh, like MSR knockoff. But 
I was really happy with that tent. It was really quick to set up, just the right amount of space that I needed. The weight's not too bad. I mean, the size of it is tiny. I mean, that's nothing, but that's got the poles in as well. It's something like, is it 1.7 kilos? So I know it's not ultra light, for, but for me, that's a very light tent. So it was my kind of backpacking tent and I, and I really missed it, to be honest. The MSR tent I've got, the Elixir 2, it's a great tent, but it's very hefty and heavy. I think it's like two and a half kilos as well. It's a bit much for, you know, backpacking in the in the warmer months. So yeah, I went ahead and got another one and I got it in green this time because that's what I wanted last time, but it wasn't available. So yeah, I'm pleased to have this tent back again. That's it. Like I say, very easy and simple to put up. Uh, there's no guy ropes on it yet because uh, it's brand new out of the bag so I'll attach them just now and peg it out because like I say I think it could get quite gusty tonight so I'll, <laughs> I'll take all the extra uh, tensioning I can get but yeah I knew the I knew the fly was that kind of sort of block green color which I like but I didn't actually realize the inner was that kind of almost like old school brown faded yellow color um, that really reminds me of tents that we used uh, when I was a kid so yeah I actually really like the colors I'm not really a fan of bright outdoor colors uh, when you don't really need it you know different if you need to be visible fair enough but uh, I'd much rather um, just blend in a little bit Right guys, it's six o'clock. I think we're gonna cook these uh, burgers up now. The uh, the wind keeps switching between gusting pretty hard and then just completely still. So I think I'm gonna have quite a few shots where I might just have to turn the uh, turn the audio off because of the wind noise. I just don't really have a choice. There's no no shelter here, and I didn't notice when I went up to the summit earlier, but there's. Uh, there's quite a few little burnt seedlings, you know, just maybe 10 centimetres high, some of them, um, just surviving on top of the hill. But it's great, you know, it's, it probably doesn't seem much to a lot of people, but um, to see trees gradually coming back at this sort of elevation, it's, it's a big deal in Scotland, especially in the Highlands. So it's really nice to see and hopefully it just continues. I mean, you've heard me say it so many times now and you're probably sick of me talking about Norway, but you know, a hill at this elevation in Norway is gonna have pine forest, you know, mature pine forest, something like what we walked up through, all over this hill, no problem. Um, you know, it's not gonna be a bare open hill. Yeah, hopefully this hill just keeps filling in the, there's loads of stuff here. I can see, I can see pine, pine, um, Scots pine seedlings everywhere. Oh yes. Burgers on the hill. Mmm. So cheesy. Mmm. Oh, so good.
Right folks, that is quarter to eleven now actually. We've just been hanging around in the tent. It's it's pretty windy outside. Some of the gusts are pretty strong. But I'm gonna call it a day there and head to bed. Hopefully get some sleep. Hopefully the wind doesn't get too crazy through the night and we will see you in the morning. Morning folks. Oh, it's actually nine o'clock already. Ended up sleeping in a little bit. The wind was it was pretty strong for half the night, but then it died down quite a bit and I, I got a decent amount of sleep, so I can't complain. But yeah, I'm just going to get coffee and breakfast on and uh, just enjoy quite a, a lazy morning, I think. That's me for this trip. I know it wasn't the most exciting video, but like I say, I just I just wanted to get out for, for an overnighter because it had been a while. As you can see, the, the sun's out now and the wind's died down, so it's a really nice day. Quite warm. It's a shame that I sort of missed the best of the weather by a day, but that's just the way it is. I will hopefully see you on the next one.